Hi, it's Mariah here, co-producer of Unsung Hero, and we are back with another prayer cast. Thank you for joining. Those of you who have been on the journey so far have seen some incredible guests, um, and this week is no exception. Uh, this is a special week because we are only a few days away from the film entering theaters around the country, and I... I believe you are going to be very surprised by by what you see and not because the trailers haven't you know told a, a great story but this week we had the red carpet premiere here in Nashville and what I heard so many of my friends and family say was that they just, they they didn't know they didn't know. <laughs> their expectations were were blown and um I did have quite a few of them say hey uh you guys should have like provided tissues. So um, yeah, if you're going to theaters and you're watching this, make sure you bring some tissues with you because I don't think any theaters are providing that, but they are providing the film. Um, you know, the, the premiere this week in Nashville was so special, uh, not just because friends and family were there, but because it really was a time where we got to bring together our industry community. Nashville is such a supportive, warm, and welcoming uh, group of colleagues and coworkers and filmmakers and music makers. And, um, you know, there, there were two people that were not able to come this week that it was um, a shock to all of us. You know, some of you might have woken up to the news that Mandisa is no longer with us. She has been a a mentor and a friend to me for the last decade. And also Gabe Patillo passed this week. Um, he is like the, the universally loved uh, multi-instrumentalist here in Nashville. He's, he's toured and played with Toby Mack and Lauren Daigle and um, his mother, uh, Jackie, is not only a mentor to me, but was part of the prayer team for this film. Um, so there were two souls that were gravely missed this week. And um, I, I tend to believe that as human beings, we have the capacity to hold space for both grief and joy for both sadness and celebration. And so that's what I'm entering into today with. And maybe some of you um, are in a similar place. You know, we experience loss all of the time, each of us. And, um, not one of those pieces, not one of those lives lost is diminished in the process of holding space for all that is happening in our lives. And I want to honor your grief today. I want to honor my grief today. And I want to bring all of that into this call because that's what we do on this prayer call. We show up as we are, who we are. And, um, and I'm thankful for that. I hope you feel like this is a safe space to be everything that you are in this moment. Thank you for being here. Continuing with the special community that we have here in Nashville. Um, we have a guest today that has just been a friend and a constant and a connector um, and an uplifter in this whole film process. Um, before I introduce her, I do want to tell you that um, there are early access screenings happening on April 24th, which is when the movie comes out. But before the film, if you go like 15 minutes before, um, there's going to be uh, some bonus footage. There's going to be uh, a new song and music video from For King and Country that will be shown. There's going to be an original cartoon from Greg Laurie. Sounds like random, but I've seen it and it's very cute. Uh, and a special message from my sister-in-law, Rebecca St. James, and my brother-in-law, Luke, before the film begins. So bring your tissues, get there early, bring your family, and help me introduce someone that you may know as DJ Tanner. Uh, I know her as executive producer of Unsung Hero and someone who has been integral, vital, absolutely necessary in getting this film, not only out to the world, but just made in the first place. I give you my dear friend, Candra, Candace Cameron Bure. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you for being here. You're welcome. It's um, it was a beautiful intro, and it is, it's a hard day. It's a hard day with the passing of really beloved and special people. Um, but you said it so beautifully that there's space mm -hmm. to celebrate the joy in the grief. But I yeah. think um, this little this little moment is um, a little bit heavier than we than you've been used to, and that we've probably been used to uh, on these weekly prayer casts. Yeah. Yeah. Well said, well said. And I, I like, I'm super grateful that you, you're, you are the type of person who is comfortable in any environment. And that's something I've always appreciated about you. Like you're not trying to make a, a moment, something it's not, you're, you're very honoring of what it is. And, and you're right. Today is a, is a mixed, a mixed bag of emotions. And I'm yeah. so glad that we can experience that on this call, because I think that gives permission to everybody showing up on this call to um, allow space for all of those things in their lives today. Cause yeah. it's not, it's not monolithic. It's not always no. celebrations exclusively at once. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of been a theme for our lives actually is like anytime something really great has happened, there's also been this like terrible loss at the same time. And I wonder if there's a lesson in that Candace, I really do. <laughs> you know, I think with, with any loss um, and as, as we, as we go into celebrating family, it's just an easy connection to be the greatest reminder to tell the people that we love, that we love mm. them and mm. that we're grateful for them and that they're in mm. our lives. And um, it's been one of my biggest lessons in losing people that I love, that I don't want to leave a room without hugging them, without mm -hmm. just letting them know, like, I love yeah. you. And so yeah. I, I overly tell people I love them now and it, not in a fake way, but mm -hmm. like my, my friends, I'm like, I'm going to make you uncomfortable because I'm going to tell you <laughs> I love you every time I see you. And, um, but I do because I'm like, you know, yeah. we just don't know when God has our day, our, God has our days ordained. He has them all planned out, but we don't know when that day and time is. So I don't, yeah. Just, I'm yeah. Sorry reminds me to just let everyone know how I feel. So nothing gets left unsaid. Mm. Thank you for that. And a really, really good reminder for how we can carry out through the rest of this day. I, I think just knowing, knowing you and kind of like over the years, our circles getting closer and closer um, to the point that I think we're completely overlapped at this point. No, we're totally overlapped. <laughs> it is a I, Venn diagram, you and me. There's so is. much in the middle. It really is. Like somehow um, the small bones and the berets are just, we, we need like the team name now of the small I bones. know. The small, small berets. berets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, something that I've just admired about you from afar and from up close is how some people say that like faith is an important part of their life. And I think as an observer, I would say that faith isn't a part of your life. It just is your life. Mm -hmm. And you seem to have found a way to really integrate your God understanding into everything that you do. Has that always been the case for you? Or did you, did you learn to kind of integrate the two later in life? Yeah, I've definitely learned it over the years because I, you know, growing up, my faith was a was a part of me, but it wasn't everything. And so it wasn't really until my early 20s where my faith became my own. And I was like, oh, mm. I, I need for Jesus. I love God. I want to spend the days of my life knowing who God is and his yeah. character and all of the things. So it's been a growth process. And now that you know, I'm in my 40s. I think with age in general, as we mature, we get more comfortable with ourselves and who we are. And so that's what I do love about aging is that you care less about what people think of you and mm. you care more about who God made you to be and mm -hmm. who you want to be. Mm -hmm. And so the faith component, like my faith has always been um, a big part of my life, but 
growing over the years and then maturing, you know, I, I, I hit a point, I think, you know, in my thirties where I'm like, I'm a woman of faith, like this is who I am. So you, and then over the years, I just have gotten more comfortable and I'm like, I'm not going to hide it in my language. I'm not going to hide it in my work. I'm not going to hide it from any part of my life. Mm. And the older I get, the bolder I get. Because I'm like, mm. how many days do I have left? I don't know. Mm. So I want to share Jesus with people. I'm going to do it from every aspect and I'm going to be unashamed and I'm going to be as kind and gentle as I can as well and loving. Mm. And um, so, you know, it's what I try to practice. Some days I get it. Some days I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate you using those, those um, descriptors, kind and gentle, because there's certainly a version of being bold that is not that. <laughs> and I, and I don't see that in, in you, which is a beautiful thing. Um, you know, people, people often associate film with like Hollywood, like a, like a capital H, like what's it like being a person of faith in Hollywood. And I think because maybe it's just because I grew up there. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I see it as much more complex. Like it's not just, it, similarly to how people describe Nashville and they're like, yeah, the Bible Belt of America. It's like, well, there's a lot going on in this area where people wouldn't necessarily prescribe to that description. So in Hollywood, in LA, in the film making industry, how have you practiced being kind and being gentle with the tension of like being bold in your relationships? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I think one of the one of the biggest lessons I've learned is is being a good listener, mm-hmm. listening to people, listening to the conversations, listen to where they're coming from, because that then allows you to, um, you know, come from a, a perspective to say, OK, if I'm going to put my 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 feet in their shoes for a moment, like mm-hmm. how would I want to receive this conversation from someone talking with me. So whether I'm, you know, working with or chatting with someone who doesn't know Christ or someone who does know Christ, that's going to change the language in which I I talk to them. And you have to listen for it. It's like you have to read the room. And so people, you know, I'm just not like a super big, bold person in that way. Um, I want to come in and listen first. I want to gain, feel my surroundings out, um, read the room and and listen to someone's approach so that I feel Mm. like I could best approach a conversation, whether Mm. on set or just on a side corner, (laughs) wherever. Um, And that's how I, I'm able to practice my faith. But sometimes I'm like, hey, I can kind of go for it. I can be really honest and truthful right now. Or I can say, you know what? I don't think this person may be ready to receive that. So let me just Mm. get my toe into it and just be real gentle and offer a kind word or a prayer or Mm. something, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost like what I hear you saying is like being bold doesn't mean you have to be loud. No. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. Often maybe even the opposite. (laughs) Isn't that funny? Yeah. Um, I... I, I think in the world of Unsung Hero and walking so closely with Joel in the process of going back and like basically revisiting a really unique time in his childhood, mm-hmm. um, it reminds me of what you've done with bringing DJ Tanner back with Fuller House. Like, mm-hmm. do you feel like revisiting that time in your life? was fun, traumatizing, healing? Like, what was it like going back to so many old neuro pathways? Yeah. Well, in general, it was incredible. It was great. I think it's a little different than Unsung Hero. I mean, I can, I mean, I had a chat with Joel on the podcast and it's, it still blows my mind to, that he put himself in his dad's shoes 30 years prior. I mean, all of the, um, just the psychological 
parts of understanding that of where, you know, his mom and dad was coming from, but to play that is just like a whole other level. As mm -hmm. far as DJ Tanner coming back, like I came back, but in current day. So mm -hmm. it wasn't really going back to the past. It was just re-embodying a character that I have loved and love to be mm -hmm. associated with, love to play my whole life, and then like get to be her again as an mm -hmm. adult. So mm -hmm. it was it was so great. Fuller House was one of the highlights of my career. And wow. it was such a beautiful time of connection with longtime friends yeah. and getting to work and play with them every day. And like, man, if I could have that job again, I'd I'd be there in a heartbeat. Mm, wow. Well, you did it well. And thank you for introducing that to a whole new generation. Um, it, it's there was so much goodness in that show that I, I'm so glad it now translates and is being gifted to a whole other group of people that maybe didn't even experience it the first time. I want to talk about your role in Unsung Hero mm -hmm. um, because you do a lot on camera, but people don't necessarily know about all that you bring to the table off the camera. So how was it like being executive producer? What were your thoughts when you first read this script? And like, were you a bit apprehensive or was it an instant yes? What was it like being on set? Take us there. Well, you know this, but just to remind people, like I've, I've known you guys for about eight years now, which I feel like it's been longer than that to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. um, we've done some fun stuff over the years together and uh, and like I'm always game. I love your family so much, so so mm -hmm. much. And so when Luke actually called, Luke and David called and said, "Hey, can we set up a meeting and talk to you because we want to bring our family story to the big screen?" And uh, I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." But there's always there's always a little bit of um, like risk. <laughs> yeah, risk. That's a good word. <laughs> risk because when you're friends with someone, you have to be honest with them. And I'm like, yes. And I read a lot, a lot of scripts. I've been um, producing movies for quite a long time and mm -hmm. I haven't been in the feature world. Mine are all have been all on television. So there's a little bit of difference, but still I read so many scripts. So it's like, yeah. okay, we're going to, we're going to read it. And it was a, such a wonderful meeting. I was really excited after um, that meeting to read the script. So I said, please mm. send it. I'll read it right away. And I did. Mm. And I just devoured it. It was one of the best scripts I've ever read. And I read it so quickly, mm. which says a lot because when something's not as good, you're, I, I tend to like, whatever, it just takes longer to get through it. It's like tough. It's like tough meat to chew on. Yeah. And you're like, ah, trying to get through. Anyway, I devoured it so quickly and I called an immediate to my product, my company, Candy Rock. And I was like, we're in, we're in on this script. And so we called back and said, yeah, like we would love to be a part of this. And so Candy Rock Entertainment signed on um, right away. And then mm -hmm. as we discussed too, they're like, you know, Joel was like, and Luke said, we also love you to play K. And so I'm like, oh goodness. Yes. I would love to play K too. So, and your Southern accent was phenom, phenom. <laughs> Door to the world, y'all. It's pretty thick, but, um, I was trying to match Lucas Black's Southern accent and Lucas is from Alabama and he has yes. a pretty like thick accent. So yes. I was calling all my Southern friends going like, help, help me with the nuance of this. And I don't want to be like over the top, Southern, but anyway, I, I think it worked alongside Lucas. <laughs> I, I, I can honestly attest to, yes, it did work. I can affirm that it did work. And, and for anyone who has either been to the premiere or who will see the film um, coming up here in only a week, I mean, you carried Kay's character with levity and with joy and, um, but you didn't lose the essence of who she was when you got into some of those deeper moments and those deeper scenes. Like when we watched the, um, the scene where you, your character and Helen go into the dollar store to buy 
you know, toys for Christmas and you look at this list and you're so saddened and you're just like, you're not going to find any of this in here. I think that that line could have easily come across as, well, here's a wealthy woman speaking to a poor woman saying, what are you doing shopping in a dollar store? And there could have been an arrogance to it. There could have been almost too much levity to it, but you stayed so true to the essence of K you stayed grounded. And that scene is, one of one of the scenes that triggers the tears for me um and it and it just feels so authentic and so real so thank you for digging into a very real place to find Kay and and for playing her with such class and such detail we're lucky to have you oh mariah thank you that was mm -hmm. very kind mm -hmm. yeah um i just have like one more question for you, yeah. if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for, for being gracious and responding to all the questions so far. But, um, you know, with this whole prayer cast, I, I've said it from the beginning, everyone on here knows, like, I don't know why they asked me to do this. Cause I'm not, <laughs> I'm not like, all right, everybody let's pray together. Like I, I'm still learning how to engage with like communal prayer, even like yeah. prayer out loud with other people, especially you strangers, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Great. Yeah, Hi, yes. I'm in the same boat. Cause I'm like, uh, pray out loud. There are lots of people. Um, and I love praying, but it still feels like there's an insecurity when it's like mass public praying. Cause I'm I like, I don't, I don't I have all the verses that just like, like when people pray and, but they speak the Bible it's yes. amazing and it's impressive and I love it, but I'm like, it's not all in here that I can, that yes. it's not there yet. Well, well, you know, what's beautiful is like the first two prayer casts that we had, we had 90,000 people join these calls. Wow. And what's so beautiful is that in a group that size, everybody speaks a different prayer language. Like this is not a everyone prays like one denomination, like this is a, a very wide net, which is one of the reasons why I agreed to, to be a part of this because I felt safe to go, you know what? Sometimes I pray with my eyes open. Sometimes, you know, I hands together, sometimes hands open. Sometimes I'm punching the air, you know, it's like, it's very different. And we all have our own unique language. Thank God, because that's part of that int intimacy that we get to experience. But um, I think that something that's special about this group of people that are on this call is they inspire me because they take prayer very seriously. It's a regular rhythm and part of their life. And so I just, as almost like a facilitator of a massive thank you from the Unsung Hero team and from everyone on this prayer cast, I want to ask you, how can we all, how can everybody on this call support you as the film releases nationwide, April 26th, like you and I both know that a film release comes with a release of all kinds of emotions and, mm -hmm. and hopes and disappointments and fears and excitement and celebration and um, memories. And there, it's a very complex postpartum that happens. And yeah. so um, how can we all be specifically praying for you? Oh, thanks for asking that. That's so kind. I, but, but I, I, what I, my, my prayers are for the whole film in general. I just so desperately want audiences to see it. I want audiences to come out because I know that in seeing the film, people walk away changed this movie. Mm. And again, I say this with the utmost humility because I've, I've made a lot of movies in my life, a lot. <laughs> And I think I'm the most proud of this film ever. And I can successfully, I mean, I can, I can say with, with the utmost confidence that it's one of the most beautiful films I've ever, not just been a part of, but I've ever watched in my life. And mm -hmm. um, so I, again, say confidently, like, you're gonna love this movie. You're gonna enjoy this movie. And the big prayer is that, again, the opening weekend means so much to us that people fill those seats on opening weekend because what that does is tells the studios out there that millions of people want positive, inspiring, quality family movies. And 
there's an, a huge audience for them. We know that, but this keeps driving the ability for the rest of Hollywood to say, yes, we're going to keep bringing in this faith content and we're going to give backing and money to these so they can be just as great as the big blockbuster movies because mm. there's so many talented filmmakers out there and, mm. and and storytellers and we all have this great creativity in these voices and you put us all together and we can make amazing stuff but it's often been overlooked when it's in the faith market or the family market or it hasn't been done well in the past but it, but it is now and it's being recognized and in, it's an exciting place to be. So mm -hmm. my prayer um, truly is for, for everyone to go out and see the film and that this, this just continues for weeks and weeks because people mm -hmm. are like, what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was, and that is just going to propel the next movie and the next movie and the next movie. And we get to keep doing excellent work. Um, telling stories for for many many more years to come yeah it's very I love how you kind of dodged that and you didn't give us a prayer request for you specifically but I appreciate it being <laughs> it's for the film. what it is listen it, I, it I, is, it it's is. what I want I want it for the movie yes. I mean like yes. as for me I'm in the middle of editing a Christmas movie. I've got a mystery right. series, but like I'm on to the, I'm already on to my next project. Yeah. So I want to sit in unsung hero right now while yeah. I am for the next two or three weeks. And I just, yeah. I want to pray over the film. Yeah. And we absolutely, I think I can speak for maybe not all 90,000 people, but for some people we will do that and agree and, and amen in every way that that word is meant to be used. Um, and I, I will also just add, like, you are pioneering so much in the film industry and in the entertainment industry as, as a woman, as someone who does very beautifully integrate um, faith into your life. And, and those two things um, become synchronous. I... I'm sure there are days where it, you know, maybe the question is, is this worth it? Am I doing anything? Am I making a difference? And my prayer for you is that you feel a resounding and you hear a resounding. Yes, mm. it is worth it. You are making a difference. You're carving a lane out that other people are going to be able to walk in and, and your sacrifice is, is noticed and seen. So thank you so much. Thank you for risking the way that you did for this film. And, um, and if you are open to it, I would love for you to pray for us, for the film, like you said, and, and we'll, um, we'll, we'll let you hop off and back into your beautiful hotel room. Um, and I'll have a little, a little, uh, bit of news to share with everybody after you get off, but for now, okay. thank okay. you, Candace. Okay. Thanks. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you that we get to gather together. Thank you that you brought us together um, to celebrate you, to celebrate the creation that you made, that family, family at the core. And um, we are so, I'm just, I'm so blessed. We're so blessed to be a part of such a beautiful movie. And I'm so grateful for everyone that's that's listening and watching right now and just been joining and being prayerful over this film and, and all the people that have been involved, involved individually within their, their personal lives and their day to day and just praying blessings over each and every one of them. And I, and I pray those blessings over um, everyone that's here with us and joining. And uh, again, I, my prayers are, um, the same to you, Lord, and you hear the the cry of my heart in that I I so want this movie to succeed and pray that um, it would be seen by millions of people, but that people's hearts would be changed, that people would get to know you and who you are and your character, your love, your grace, your mercy, your provision, your protection. You're so good, God. And some of us at times feel so... Um, desperate, overwhelmed, helpless, hopeless. But God, you're with us in every moment. And uh, it's a reminder that when we cry out to you and you listen, when we speak, you hear us and you're with us every moment, every day of our lives. And so I pray, Lord, that we all would 
keep our eyes focused on you, that we would turn our hearts, we would rend our hearts back to you. And, um, and we would just get to know who you are because you are a God who loves so fiercely and you are desperate for us. And that is, that's incredible, God. I don't know anyone that desperate for me. And uh, it makes me overwhelmed with emotion that you are desperate for me and every person listening um, that you want us to know you. So Lord, thanks for our time together. And we do pray blessings in the week to come. And um, and just pray that uh, you would use this film, that people would know you more. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Candace. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day. You guys, thank you so much for joining. And I hope you feel as like just encouraged and refreshed as I do after speaking with Candace and that prayer. I'm like, hmm, I need to get some water. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> mm. um, okay, so just one, one thing to share with you. Um, it's a new featurette. Some of you may have seen it, but I'm thinking a lot of you have not because it just came out this week. And it is Kingdom Story, Andy Irwin, who was also an executive producer of Unsung Hero. He has been a part of Jesus Revolution. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I mean, he has really helped not only pioneer this new space and genre of film, but he's become a mentor to me, to my husband as filmmakers. And his passion is to create films that inspire a rush of hope. And I think Unsung Hero is very in line with that. So we will show you that clip and thank you for joining. I'll see you in theaters next week. Um, and don't forget to join us next Friday, a week from today, same date and time with two Aussie hotties, Joel and Luke. Uh, they will be joining us for another time of prayer and we'll be talking about the film and the really exciting opening weekend that we will be heading into. So we will see you next Friday. Enjoy this new featurette. Does anybody really care what a 16-year-old girl thinks about life or God? I know what I believe. Maybe I'm not meant to sing. You have been given a beautiful voice and you have a good heart. Maybe you're not meant to sing other people's songs. At Kingdom Story Company, we want the stories that we tell to deliver what we call a rush of hope. Everyone in the theater leaves just feeling that the world could be a better place and wanting to go out and change their communities. There's something really special when that happens. The stories that we've done like Jesus Revolution, I Can Only Imagine, I Still Believe in the Jesus Music. These were films that weren't just about a story. They're about a powerful song behind it. Unsung Hero is about a mum and her six kids with one on the way and her husband had lost everything migrating from Australia to the United States. Music is all I know. I want to do something that matters. Yeah, and we have to move halfway around the world for it. Is there really no other way? This is my last chance. It's also a story that's deeply steeped in music. She's a special one, David. Triggers getting other folks to see it. When she sings and thinks no one's watching, she shines. Just give her time. Something inside me and Helen knew that we had a calling. The core of what saw us through was relying on God and then relying on each other and the love that we had for one another. I think it was really the foundation of your career. Because we lived by faith for years at that point, I had something to say. I said, God, here's my gifts, here's my talents, use me. And he started opening up doors with music. And then it changed the foundation of everyone. It changed David and me. I love to sing. And if it can help other people find what God's given my family, then I'll do it with all my heart. Please welcome Rebecca St. James. Rebecca has influenced millions of people, but ultimately her recalling wasn't this big music career, it was family. 
us to shine a light on like what actually matters? What actually are the things that you're living for? Why are you performing that song? I think God wants for us to just show up. God's given you these talents. Give glory to Him and just try our best.